This is Betting Weekly Extra Time, Europa League and Europa Conference League edition. We are down to the last 16 in both competitions. Show with Dan Roebuck and returning RJ, Steve Wiss and Will White. Playoff rounds completed. 13 of the 16, both teams to score. Yes, 12 of the 16 hit over two and a half. Nine of the 16 over three and a half. Steve, it was fairly wild as we suggested at the time it might be. Same again this time around. Does it get a little bit more serious? We've got teams that didn't play in the playoff round, obviously, joining the fray. Will we see a little bit of Champions League caution now that we're getting closer to the finals of both of these competitions? Well, hello, everyone. And this is my favourite show, Europa League and Conference League. I love these competitions. I can't believe that I actually lost in the previous round. I think it's disappointing when that happens because I really just feel like I can win on any game at the minute with the the, the layout and the, the teams that are involved. So, um, yeah, I think it will be the same again. I think um, until we get perhaps, say, the semi-finals, and even then, it depends who's left in it. There might not be that much pressure on a team to, say, qualify for the Champions League, or there might be. But teams generally are a lot more open in Europa in the Conference League, and it leads to uh, you know less pressure overall, leading to goals, leading to more wild encounters, and especially now the away goals rule's gone, which is what we love about the Europa League. Mm-hmm. Well, um, we talk about your ratings. We talk about. I mean, I just I would find it impossible to try and just sort of assess you know a Norwegian side against a Spanish side, a Polish side against a. Uh, a Portuguese side and so on. Does does it get easier now? We know what these teams have done um, over the course of this competition. Does it get harder because of the, the state of the competition? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, especially early on group stage, <clears throat> it's very challenging from a ratings perspective because you've got you've got the challenge of pricing up each team in, domestically. And some of these leagues are not leagues that, you know, I or other model bettors would would typically bet on and trade and, and therefore model. Then you've got the challenge of rating leagues against each other. Uh, and then you've got the challenge of trying to interpret how a manager is going to prioritize or not uh, Europa League or, or Conference League competition. So from a modeling perspective, it's it's complicated, but but that's not just the case for us as betters. It's also the case for the line makers, right? So there, there are more errors out there. It's just harder to find them. And that would become apparent, I think, or it did become apparent, RJ, uh, when we look at how many winning favourites we had, the the playoff games, just six of 16. I was looking at the prices earlier today. I mean, mm. as Will says, it's challenging for betters, but mistakes are made by the market makers uh, as, as well. You've, we've just all got to work a bit harder at it, I guess. Yeah, and that's kind of how we approach or how I approach the the uh, finding value is is looking at recent form, whether it's domestic. Uh, the only way that you can really quantify looking at recent data for tournament play is if there's five plus, in my opinion, like four or five plus games that you can you can reference that data from tournament play, right? Because it is different than domestic play. So that's why I factor like last 25 typically because it is challenging to to kind of correlate. You can use coefficients and XG and all the stats in the world. Like I'm a big stats guy, but it's very difficult because you have to you have to look at the competition that these teams face. Is it similar to the teams that they're going to be facing in the tournament? What's their style of play? What's their tactics? But it is challenging with with favorites because you know, in the Europa League, you often find upsets where lower seeded teams defeat favorites. And, and there are good high value opportunities because of that. And then you have to look at teams with, you know, who are performing well historically in European competitions who have experience and then the depth. Um, because if they're factoring in um, going for their domestic titles, uh, the schedule could be crammed. There could be some rotation. So there's a lot of factors that you have to um, consider. And and that's what makes it challenging. But it's fun for us to as, as uh, handicappers to to find opportunities based on that. Just before we get it into the picks, I, I just want to get your guys' thoughts on Liverpool. They are the favourites for the Europa League. They are plus one seventy five to win the competition. Um, right at the start of the season, they were favourites. The teams that have dropped down from the Champions League haven't really made that much of a difference. Right at the top of the betting here, and obviously, Steve, they are at the minute challenging 
for the Premier League title. Um, they've got a huge game coming up against Manchester City at the weekend. They're also in the FA Cup, of course, as well. They could have done with four uh, pieces of silverware at the end of the season. I mean, how, how do we assess Liverpool at the moment? They make the outright market. They take on Sparta Prague, first leg away, Thursday, 12.45 kickoff. What, what's your thoughts on Liverpool? Is it a play? Is it a lay? Is it a watching brief? Lay them. I, I really like Sparta Prague in this match. And I, I mean, I could have given you 10 picks on this show. but um, So I've only gone with my best picks. So this is not an official selection. But I think Sparta Prague draw, draw double chance or plus a half Asian handicap. Um, close to even money with Bet Rivers. It would not you could do a lot worse because this is a situational spot for Liverpool. They're looking ahead to a huge game against Man City. That is such a massive game, and the full priority is going to be on that. We know they've got a lot of injuries anyway. Jurgen Klopp is not going to take any risks with players against a Sparta Prague team who I mean, this is quite a raucous atmosphere here. They're going to be bang up for it. They're going to sense some blood and sense a scalp. And they're not that bad. Sparta Prague are an underrated team. I said that on the last show when they beat Galatasaray. Um, I think I could see them winning. I think they can win the first leg. Now, over the two legs, you know, Anfield, it's a different story, isn't it? But, uh, you know, it would not surprise me in the slightest if there was a shock result here. Um, Liverpool's kids, Klopp's kids have done very well recently. But I think this is a step too far. Sparta Prague draw, draw double chance for me, but it's not an official pick. Yeah, I mean, Will, look, I've I've faded Liverpool their last two games. Uh, I backed Southampton on the Asian handicap. I lost, and then I backed Forest plus one at the weekend, and uh, still not happy about what happened in the 189th minute or whatever. How many added mm. minutes Liverpool got <laughs> to make sure that they got their win? What's 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 your Liverpool thoughts here? Out, you know, outright this game in particular. Where does it sit for them in terms of? of their priorities at, at the moment and what do you think that Jurgen Klopp might do against Sparta away from home? Yeah, I was I was also on Southampton plus one and a quarter in the cup game. That line should have easily won. Uh but Liverpool, you know, they just they just did Liverpool things and finished their chances and Southampton missed theirs. Actually Southampton rotated totally in that game as well, but still they should they should have won. Um Forest is yeah, we all know what happened in the Forest game. What is this line all about? Well from a ratings perspective, Liverpool are very strong favourites, right? Minus 1.20 goal favourites here. But that that's assuming them at full strength. And clearly, they're not going to be full strength here. And I think their, full, their, their kind of reserves 11 is going to be weaker than it normally would be because they've still got nine or so players out with injuries. Salah may or may not get some minutes here because of City at the weekend. Same with, with Sabo's lie. So, you know... I'm assuming it's going to be a similar 11 to the Southampton game. Liverpool went off minus one and a quarter. They got backed in there with, with three or four kids starting. Went off minus 250 on the money line at home. Now, the challenge for me is kind of trying to figure out where Sparta Prague kind of lie on the rating spectrum. And, and I've got them similar rated team to Southampton, which might sound disrespectful. But South, but these days, championship, the top championship sides, you know, are essentially similar quality to the lower, the lower Premier League sides, and this, these are good football teams. So Sparta Prague, I agree with Steve. They're they're no mugs, and they disposed of Galatasaray in the last round. This is, I guess, a roundabout way of me saying this is a no bet game for me. Hmm. Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, I mean. Gone are the days where you could blanket back against English teams going away in Europe and playing reserve 11s featuring three or four or five kids. These days, the eight, let's say they start three kids and, and, and eight bench players. Those bench players will all be like seasoned internationals, the likes of Cody Gappo. I mean, so it's still a strong, strong team. If I extrapolate my ratings to this game and then adjust for likely lineups i come out to a minus 0.65 goal handicap uh supremacy for liverpool which is essentially what they're trading at now maybe they drift on game day with a with a weak lineup and i'd be looking to back them but uh yeah current prices are about right i mean i i, I could persuade myself to to fade liverpool here rj and then I start looking at Liverpool at, at just a bit minus money at minus 120 and think well they keep getting the job done and as will has just pointed out second string players, you know, 
to players that might not start every single game are still very, very good. And we could be sat here, you know, late Thursday night thinking, crikey, why on earth didn't we just back Liverpool? Because they just keep on winning at the moment. I mean, Sparta are plus 450 to qualify. And if I look the other way, I can think, yeah, that might be might be a fair bet as well. It's a difficult one, this. What's, uh, what's your handle on it if you were to have a, a free $25 play on it? Yeah, I I tend to agree with all the, the theories and thoughts that everyone's stated so far. I think even with the nine injuries, right, Salah, Gravin back, uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Jota, like the list goes on for the injuries for, for Liverpool, but yet they just continue to get the job done. And one may argue that, you know, no offense to Sparta Prague, I think they have a strong, they're, they're a good team. But teams like Liverpool, sometimes they're second string could could be just as good that, that that's how good this team is now that could be up for debate but liverpool just keeps getting the job done one nil victory over nottingham after you said 198 added minutes or whatever last uh, over the weekend and then liverpool's defense has just been strong that's that's the that's the that's the main reason why they just keep winning they've conceded three goals in six matches and they scored 16 goals in that time period so you, generally speaking you, you score a lot more than you concede you're going to win games right no matter who you play um Spot of Prague, uh, mixed results, right? Over the last um, few matches, they had a nil-nil draw against Slavia Prague domestically. They've scored 14 goals in their last six matches, um, but they've had a significant amount of possession, right? They typically dominate the, the ball possession, but they, um, you know, their conversion rate isn't quite high. They have a fairly full squad. I think Persado, uh, Persiato, uh, the former Genk, uh, midfielder is he had a red card over the weekend domestically i'm not sure if he'll be out uh but uh, you know i narrow I, if i were to have a free 25 dollars bet yeah i'm taking liverpool minus 113 minus 120 just because why not i mean that's what i'd feel comfortable going in and even though they're on the road they're still a better squad with all the injuries in my opinion Let's get some picks, uh, shall we? We've got plenty of official plays when it comes to the Europa League and the Conference League show. We're going to start with Roma versus Brighton, which is Thursday, 12.45 uh, Eastern here. Uh, Roma plus 108, Brighton plus 245, draw plus 255. Roberto De Zerbe, who's plus 600 to be the next Liverpool coach, incidentally. Uh, his Brighton side have, have struggled domestically, Will, recently, and the renaissance for Roma continues under Daniel De Rossi. Talk us through your play here. I noticed your your stat on the notes, uh, Dan, says, what does it say? One loss in nine for Roma under Daniele De Rossi. But um, I'm, the way I look at this is eight of nine over two and a half since De Rossi took over. And I think, I think not only is this an opportunity to take advantage of a market that hasn't kind of come to terms with the fact that Roma's style of play under De Rossi is completely detached from what it was under Mourinho, but also... We're looking at markets across the Europa League and Conference League in this round where the over-under lines are kind of off when um, when you've got two attack-minded coaches uh, going head-to-head. -head. I, think, I think the market makers are kind of looking at this in a similar way that they look at the first legs of the Champions League ties and kind of assuming that teams are going to come in kind of looking to approach it cautiously and kind of ease into things. I don't think that's going to be the case in this matchup. Um, if you look at the last playoff round, so the last round of Europa League games, first leg, six of eight went over two and a half and uh, 12 of 16 across both legs. Um, I don't feel like the teams have the similar kind of level of pressure that they do going into these first leg, leg games as they do in the Champions League. We've talked about the transition of Roma under De Rossi a little bit. The last two games, 4-1 win versus Monza, 3-2 uh, win versus Torino, over under lines there set at two and a half and two and a quarter respectively. You know, Torino are, are kind of a, a defensive minded team. Monza kind of somewhere in the middle. Brighton is certainly an attack minded team. And I know that's dropped off a bit recently and Brighton's goal expectancy has dropped, but they're still six from eight uh, over two and a half. Six, six of their last eight have gone over two and a half. And I think you know, if you if you think about Brighton over the season and you think about the Zerbi as a coach, it's rare that you'll see two and a half over under two and a half lines. Normally, the lines in the Premier League certainly will be over under three, three and a quarter. So two and a half is, is very, very rare. So I think we're looking at two attack minded coaches going head to head. 
with uh, a plethora of offensive weapons. You've got Dybala, Lukaku for Roma. You've got Adinga, Adingra, Buenanote, Welbeck for Brighton, Matomas. But the Matoma injury slightly hampers this bet, but there's more than enough talent on the pitch. Um, I expected the line to be at least over under 2.75. I know that it's shortening a little bit. Uh, I got this pick in at minus 115 when I was looking late Saturday night. Um, I'd back this into the two uh, over under 2.75. But yeah, pick is over 2.5 at minus 115. It makes a really good case for that. I do like the way that, that De Rossi's changed it. And the market makers might not have caught up with that just yet. Incidentally, Brighton plus 1,100 to win the Europa League. Roma plus 1,600. You might make a case for Roma on what we've seen Ro recently. Roma win that first mm. leg for me. I, Brighton mm. I have gone well off. I mean, they've mm. got beaten by Luton and Fulham uh, by a 7-0 combined score recently. They, they, they're falling off the wayside. They, they can't defend that well. Roma will get through over two legs for me. Do you think that De Zerbi's not, not targeting this competition now and, and just almost... I mean, he made a lot of changes again at the weekend, didn't he? Uh, he uh, yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? That, that is the thing that would put put me off backing them, Roma, in this first leg because, you know, Brighton may well have their eggs in this basket. And they, look, on their day, they can beat anyone, can't they, I suppose? But I, I don't like what I've seen recently from, from the club that they've they really struggled for wins, especially in the Premier League. Yeah, so, still in the um, top ten. I mean, they're drifting mm. a little bit, aren't they? It's, it's an odd situation, I think. There, I think there's a little bit of needle with Deserbi and Roma as well. I can't can't remember the story. He's got needle he, with everyone, hasn't he? Very <laughs> has, Yeah, when he was at, <laughs> when he was at Sassuolo, I can't remember the uh, the story there. <laughs> or, or certainly, he was he was somewhere, and, and there was a little bit of needle. There. But let's face it, yeah, um, that is often the case with coaches in Italy. Uh, speaking of Italy, we're going to stay in Italy for uh, Milan against Slavia Prague, three p.m. Uh, Eastern this one. Milan short price at minus 215 to win the first leg. Slavia Prague plus 600. Uh, much needed win for Milan at the uh, at the weekend against uh, Lazio. First win after three without. Um, goals may be beginning to dry up and that potentially is an angle in for betters here, RJ. Yeah, so I'm going back to the underwell, right? I've turned a new leaf this year, but uh, this... You're a this... new man, RJ. I'm a new man, right? New man with a new plan here. Hopefully this comes through. I like under 2.75 at minus 109. Uh, AC Milan, you know, I think from a statistical analysis perspective, I, I, I see this as a, as a tight, tight match, right? This, this uh, points towards <clears throat> a strategic type battle in the midfield. Both teams likely to be cautious in their approach. I think... Slavia Prague have shown they have potential. Uh, they've actually scored, <clears throat> excuse me, they've scored first in 100% of their matches domestically this season, this season believe it or not. Um, and, you know, maybe that stat suggests AC Milan will need to be wary of their, their threat from the onset. Maybe they'll have to make sure they batten down the hatches, if you will. Um, moreover, I think corner Corner and stat, corner kicks in in card statistics, uh, you know, indicate this this will be a, a, a you know a discipline type approach. I thought I saw pretty low numbers for both in in this uh, in this engagement here, and I think they'll just be focused on structure and avoid unnecessary bookings. Again, a strategic type approach, and and given the insights in the last twenty five matches, because I didn't have enough data to to back from a tournament perspective. Both sides concede under one goal, right? Slavia Prague on the road, 0 0.77. Milan, 0 0.88, just under one. Both sides keep a clean sheet at least 40% of the time in their respective home and away spots. In fact, <clears throat> over 2.5 goals occurred, <clears throat> excuse me, um, occurred 45% of the time for both these sides. So statistics, approach, tactical, I expect uh, a low score and a fair here. So under 2.75 at minus 109 is my play. We can't hear you, Dan. There we go. First of the season for me. Um, uh, she, <laughs> my, my, yellow, my, yellow card. Yellow card. I, I don't know where my yellow cards have gone. Um, they're plus 700 uh, to win the uh, Europa League uh, Milan. It's, it's a bit short. Will, Steve, any thoughts on, on Milan to, to win it? I, I don't think I would back them to win. What do you think, Will? I think they were a little short. Yeah, um, yeah it's hard to look past Liverpool and Leverkusen, mm. isn't it? But mm. yeah. 
I mean, a draw, I guess, could could go against one of those aforementioned teams, but um, be interesting to no, see. No, they're not happens. a bad side. I think they're a fair price, really. Um, yeah. They're. Uh, I mean, I've watched quite a lot of AC Milan since the start of the year, and, and they they've had some quite wild games. Dan, mm. um, to be honest, this, they they should Slavia Prague, by the way, are a bit of an underrated team. Mm. They um they I don't I've seen more of Sparta Prague than Slavia, but Slavia go under the radar a lot. I think. Um, I think Milan should get past them over two legs there. Uh, Marseille Villarreal, we're going to talk about next. Uh, all three of our handicappers have got picks here. There's variations on a theme uh, for this game. It's 3 p.m. Eastern. Marseille minus 107. Villarreal plus 290. Draw plus 255. Steve, just tell us the backstory with the Marcelino and the coach here with Villarreal. Yeah, well, this is, Marcelino... good, this is going to be interesting for him, isn't it? It's not going to be nice for him, I suspect. No. Um, Marcelino, Marcelino was appointed Marseille coach last summer and he managed seven games in charge and probably the highlight of it was or low low point of it was getting knocked out of the Champions League by Panathinaikos over two legs um, but there was a lot of issues with the, the fans the ultra groups didn't, in, didn't like the style of football they didn't like the way that the club was being run and there were rumoured to be death threats were sent to Marcelino um, which prompted his resignation after just seven games in charge. So, I mean, it was all an absolute mess. Um, obviously, since then, Gennaro Gattuso has come into Marseille. They've sacked him. So, Jean-Louis Gasset, the, the failed Ivory Coast boss, is, is now in yeah. charge. Yeah, the, the Africa Cup of Nations winner, yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> look, Marcelino, I mean, this is crazy that they've drawn each other, isn't it? I mean, yeah. what the mm. earth are the chances of this? Um, it's going to be, he, he's in for an interesting reception. Mm, he is. Um, we're predicting goals here. Steve, you go first. Yeah, well, Will's got a, a pick for this game as well. Um, he put it in the in the group chat first, and uh, I've kind of gone. Oh, Will can go first if he wants. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll start. I'll start it off because start the ball uh, rolling. I'll I'll, I'll 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 reveal what Will's pick is. Will's picks over two and a half. <laughs> now I'm going one more. I'm going over three Asian goals, right? Because I just think that this is a, a clash of of great style. That I mentioned on the European preview show last week, uh, I think Villarreal, I'm going to make them kind of my wagon team for overs for the rest of the season in the right spot. And um, I mean, both of these legs should go well over. Villarreal, it's like rinse and repeat, isn't it? They, they can't really defend. They've got one of the worst XGAs in La Liga. We know they've been involved in high-scoring games in Europe. But they do have a lot of offensive weapons. So combine that with a recent resurgence of Marseille. Jean-Louis Gasset has come in. I think he's actually wanted to get the fans on side. It was not a lot of fans wanted him in. I mean, this is someone who failed, in, to, you know, was sacked midway through the African who, Nations Cup for Ivory Coast. Who, 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 would be, who would be acceptable? For Marseille supporters, I'm not going to visit. I'm not, I'm not going to go to Marseille well, anytime soon. You, you know what? You know what? Because they right? seem um, to have it. They have an issue with everyone. <laughs> On the day that uh, Gattuso was sacked, there was would a name Chris trending. Wad, would Chris Waddle be welcomed with open arms? There was a name trending it. on Twitter, and I got excited momentarily. Bielsa's name was trending on Twitter. Um, but uh, he's never going to come back again, is he? But look, come on. John Louis Gasset wasn't a very enterprising appointment. It was a quite depressing hire, really. But I, what he's done, he's come in and he's trying to get the fans on side by just play, playing exciting football. You know, yeah. you can't knock 12 goals in three games. I think this is standout over for me mm. for the round. I'm really, really confident in this. But if this was a Euro if this was the European preview show, this would be my two unit pick. But it's one um, unit on o over three Asian goals at plus one fifty. So I'm getting. Well, we, we you know, we we could make it a triple play because I know RJ leans this way. But will um, talk us to your your reasoning here because you're a bit more cautious with with, a, with an over two and a half line. Yeah, I um. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, Steve took the words out of my mouth, really. A lot, a lot of the stats that he just reeled off there are the ones I've got in my notes as well. I've gone with the main Asian line of uh, over two and a half at minus 113 because generally speaking on the main Asian line, you'll be you'll be paying less juice. I know it's a shorter price, but in terms of the margins that the books that Bet Rivers will put into their prices, you'll get lower margin. Is that because uh, it's, it, is, it is the main line and therefore... Yeah, yeah. yeah because it's the main line. The alt lines generally have more margin built into them. So I'd always suggest to a better, to a, to look at the main Asian line first to see if there's anything you like. If you've got a particularly strong opinion like Steve has in this game, and like I do actually, 
you can then look to the alt lines and kind of look to do a ladder play like um like rj would suggest but i mean and this is a great example like this this line just blows my mind really you you've got on the one hand you've got jean louis gasset who since he's come in three in th- three games as Marseille manager, there have been 15 total games of uh, total goals. Obviously, that averages five a game, and that's that's all you really ne- need to know to pull a trigger on on an over two and a half line here. I am La Liga is probably my strongest league, the one I follow the most. And Villarreal, like Steve says, they are certainly an overs team as well. Twelve of eighteen have gone over two point five since Marcelino took over in November. They just can't defend. As Steve says, they've conceded the third most goals in La Liga. They've conceded the second most XG. On top of that, their captain and key defender, Raul Albiol, is out until the end of the month. So that'll throw even more uncertainty into the mix. Um, It's already a pretty disorganized Villarreal defense, isn't it? Marcelino has tried to tighten things up, but um, there's only so much you can do with the players they've got at their disposal. Um... I quite like Villarreal to go through here, though. Um, they're plus money. They're underdogs to go through, I believe. And uh, I wouldn't put they're minus off. what minus one hundred six with Marseille minus one twenty five. Yeah, so technically yeah. they are yeah. underdogs. Yeah. You may yeah. be able to get plus money uh, mm. if you wait. If you shopped um, around, you might. No, I, I wouldn't. Didn't want to say shop around. I wanted to say <laughs> wait. Um, but um, yeah, quite fancy Villarreal. But main play, and this is standout, standout value, I think is over two and a half, minus one, one, three. If this game goes under, it will be quite incredible. Um, RJ, I mean, have you got anything to add in terms, because you said, look, you know, I, I I like the overs here, but I appreciate the boys have, have got their picks in first. But I mean, this would be a play for you as well, I guess. Would you go over two and a half? Would you go over three? What would What would your line be? What do you think? Yeah, like like well mentioned, I would potentially ladder this over two point five at minus. Well, I think one thirteen is doesn't make sense to me. I, that's something I'd be all over. I will be all over it. In fact, I probably lock it in after this show. And then I would consider over two point seven five, maybe over three as well. I, I very rarely do that, by the way. Like in terms of laddering plays, it's just not something. No, we, we've pinned you as the ladder guy, and I know <laughs> you said you're not before, but you know, yeah, once, I'm, once, yeah. once you get tarred with a brush, and it's not the worst <laughs> brush to be tarred with. Once you get to that's it, you're the ladder guy. Yeah, the ladder, the ladder guy. guy. But um, yeah, as long as it's uh, safety, it's a safety. It's 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 updated. Anything over and... three stories, as I found out to my roof through there. Anything over, you got have a got have a scaffold tower. Can't have ladders over three stories. Uh, any anyway, we like overs, but there is another play. Because RJ's found another one for us, and uh, we yeah. go to the bookings, the cards here. RJ, talk us through this one. Yeah, but wait, there's more. Um, yeah, looking at over four point five cards here, minus one twelve. Um, I needed to find some other opportunity in this in this match. I, I felt like this was just a match that has a lot of potential, right? There was even corners I considered in this match as well. I think over nine. I think it was like over ten point five at even money. That this was a very high total. Um, but looking at cards, simply put, um, over there was eight matches for Marseille with data. Villarreal had six matches with data in tournament play here. And combined, believe it or not, 6.4 cards per match between both these sides and their respective home and away spots. So I, I can tell you what, I look at cards pretty seldomly, but very rarely do I see statistics where it's showing five plus cards, let alone six. And this has the makings, you know, uh, a French versus a Spanish side. I don't know. Just, 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 just has the makings of a chippy match. And every match in their respective home and away spots in tournament play has seen over 4.5 cards. So aside from trends, uh, what's at stake? I expect to see a lot of goals here, like the boys have mentioned. And uh, looking at cards over 4.5 at minus 112. Nil nil, incidentally, is eleven to one just for the doubters slash haters. Slash <laughs> if it ends nil nil, nil, the books are gonna be. What you lay me nil? What you lay me nil nil, Steve? What you lay me nil nil? Oh, this is like twenty to one or something. I don't know. It's, it's, if it the ends, thing is it? If it ends nil nil, the comments are gonna be build fine. material everything. <laughs> this is mm. like. Same game parlay territory. There's so much. I mean, the cards is a great one as well because, I mean, both managers might end up booked as, as well. I mean, it's going to mm. be a fiery atmosphere. This could be crazy. This could be like two or three all, you know? Yeah. 
Let's want hope. to watch. Let's hope he delivers. Want to watch. Want to watch. Um, we are running behind schedule, so we're going to rattle through conference corner mm. where we've got a few plays from from Steve and Will. I might just ask um, uh, RJ about the Mulder game as well. Um, Ajax Villa, first of all, 12.45 Thursday. Um, Villa plus 2.50 to win the Europa Conference League. And Steve, they've found their form recently. They take on an Ajax side that have been basket cases themselves, haven't they, this season? I mean, Villa are minus 155 away from home uh, to claim a first leg advantage. What are your thoughts? What's she playing this one? I'm going to start off with an apology, actually, Dan. Mm-hmm. I, um, I'm i going against what I said on Twitter after the result of the last round. I said, whoever Ajax are facing, I'm going to be betting against them, whatever. Uh, I'm The bet is not on Villa. It's going to sure? be on over... Well, I'll tell you why in a minute, but um, I'm going over 3.25 goals instead at minus 103. I just think Villa have got a massive game upcoming at the weekend against Spurs and ultimately, you know, top four or win the conference league. We've had this debate before, haven't we? Um, I'm actually, I might have been wrong. I think the general gist from the fan, from Villa fans is that they actually would rather get in the Champions League for next season. So, um, and I guess the club with the money as well. So, look, I think they'll have an eye on that game and I can't be sure of the lineup for Villa here. And also, they are a bit short. And I know it's Ajax and Ajax are not very good. Ajax are an absolute shambles, but they're still a prideful team with a lot of European experience. I'll take the goals instead because I think Villa play really only one way, don't they? Um Probably the goals haven't fired as much in the conference league as I thought they would. But uh, I mean, we saw Ajax against Buda Glimp. They're very lucky to have got through that tie. Just not a very good side this year. But they do have some offensive weapons that you've got to respect. Uh, they've got a defensive suspension in uh, Sotalo. Yeah, might make them even better, actually make them better. I don't know. I mean, there weren't many good performances defensively, were they, from them? In, in all season. So um, I'll take the over 3.25 goal line. It's a good go-to bet for any Ajax game, isn't it, usually? And Villa, for that matter. Uh, I mean, I, Villa, I think we should still... If I knew Villa were going to be full strength and uh, focusing on it, I would be very confident in an away win here. But it's just that nuggling doubt with a big uh, game at the weekend. So over 3.25 goals at minus 103. That's slightly different line, Steve. When it comes to the Asian goal line for Mulder against Club Brugge, it's almost each a two on the money line. Norwegian domestic season still yet to start, but they were pretty good against uh, Legia Warsaw the previous round. What's your play here? A bit annoyed in the last round that I didn't get on Mulder in either leg. I think Will's probably a bit annoyed about that one as well. Uh, also annoyed I didn't get on the goals. I, I was just thinking they might be a bit undercooked and they might not be firing, but they look pretty good, Mulder. I, I think they're actually a big price to get through uh, this tie at plus 160 to qualify. I think they could get through against Club Bruges. But I like the goals here, over 2.75 goals at plus 108. Um, you know, we just saw in the previous round that not much has really changed with, with Mulder. They're, they're really on the front foot, this 5-3-2 formation. And, um, you know, Club Bruges are well used to facing Norwegian teams. They actually got the better of glimpsed twice in the group stage. Um, you know, they've got a history of doing all right against Norwegian teams, in fairness. They've got a few players who are used to playing that league. And, uh, you know, I don't know as much about them as, obviously, Mulder, but uh, I've looked back. I mean, Bruges look like they're going to be playing 4-3-3, 4-2-3-1, which is an interesting clash of styles. Generally, fairly high-scoring team with, with a lot of goal-scoring potential. I think it should be goals at both ends. It's just Mulder matches are a magnet for goals and now that they've got a couple of competitive games out of the way I'm really confident they're going to be even sharper than they were before there's a bet I really like in this game and I can't get on yet with Bet Rivers because uh, they're not offered a goal scorer but Frederick Goulbranson from Mulder is uh, to any to score at any time I would happily get on him at anything at say plus one 30 or 140 and above he's a really uh he scored four goals in the in the uh previous match at one stage i think he could have gone a long way in soccer but he, he had a whole year out in 2015 i think it was with a knee injury and that just set him back a bit but he's a high class player who i've always rated and he just looks red hot right now so good branson bet on him to score any time as well 
but over oh. two point seven five goals uh, is plus one oh eight is my bet. Okay, we'll we'll look after the goal scorer as well. But just want to one day here because I know you like uh, some of the um, uh, more interesting leagues across uh, not just Europe but the world as well. I mean, just on the form, I asked Eva about you know if the domestic season hasn't started. I mean, do you, do you leave teams alone? Even domestically, until there's a few games in your form book here, would you would you not look at Mulder because they've not played domestically so far this season? RJ, how do you see it when those Scandinavian sides re-engage in European football at this stage of a year? Yeah, I, typically, if, if it's domestically, I wait until three, four matches are under the belt before I participate in any wagering. Um, but <clears throat> as Steve did allude to, Mulder has participated in what they believe they call the Atlantic Cup, so they've had some competitive matches. Um, which is good enough for me to to to, to sort of leverage those uh, results and, and statistics for tournament play. Um, so I do wait typically for domestically, but I mean, they, I think this match was 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 challenging to uh, to to arrive at a pick personally. I do I don't mind the look of goals here. I think Club Bruges on the road are a bit inconsistent as of late. And I do like the look of both teams to score, but it was minus one fifty nine, minus one sixty. So that's that's obviously out of range. But um, you know, I, I think that plus money, this is a good this is a good value bet, Steve. I, I agree. I think uh, I think Molde, both sides have the firepower to um, to get it done. And I know we're we're uh, we're, we're talking about the Europa League. I wanted to just mention something quickly that I saw yesterday uh, that um, Nor Norwegian uh, Benjamin Stoke. From Christensen, the newly promoted side in Norwegian second league, they're promoted to the top division. See, and we're talking about Norway has signed with Breda Blit, uh, the uh, the Icelandic side. So they found their new striker. So I don't know if you saw that, but uh, a little bit of news out of out of Norway this weekend. It's a big transfer window season in Scandinavia now, and there'll be a lot of action, yeah, across the board. Mm -hmm. So you want to, if you're those who are looking for our rights in those leagues, you want to be waiting two or three more weeks, really. Uh, one more match preview to look at. Uh, Will's got to play for us. Uh, Union saint Wells against Fenerbahce. This is 3 p.m. on Thursday. Later kickoff, uh, the Belgian side are plus 128. Fenerbahce plus 205 here. And both of these teams are on our futures portfolio as well with Union saint Wells tipped at 25 to 1. Fenerbahce tipped at 14s. They're now 18s and 9s respectively here, Will. I think you were on Union Sancho while Steve, did you put Fenerbahce up? Yeah, well, we're going to get a quarter finalist, aren't we, at least? But, we are. Um, it's a bit of a naff draw for us, this one. Uh, mm. We didn't really want them facing each other yet. Mm. Uh, Will, um, take it away. What do you like in this game? Who do you think is going to get through? Uh, it's following the overs theme again with over 2.5, minus 114. Another game where I just don't understand the line being set at, at two and a half. I think maybe lines makers are being a little bit a little bit lazy here. Um, Union Sanjo will out, co uh, constant theme on this show. Uh, went over two and a half in both games in the previous round versus Eintracht Frankfurt. The home leg was particularly open with 3.5 total XG generated and 13 shots on target. I think we see a similar kind of attacking mindset in, in this game. Fenerbahce have typically played weakened sides in this competition, prioritising the league, but I think they'll start to take it more seriously uh, now that the knockout rounds have started for them. Uh, five of their six group stage games went over two and a half. I think overall Fenerbahce are just quite an attack-minded team, right? During... Uh, during a, a particular 10-game stretch in December and January, uh, five of those 10 games finished with six, six, seven, seven, and eight total goals. It was quite a, an incredible stretch. I think they had a 6-1 or was it a 7-1 thrown against uh, Nordstelland in, in this competition, Steve, in the group stage? Crazy, crazy Yeah, they, Nordstelland bat battered two teams. Was it 7-1 and, and still yeah. didn't qualify? But they beat, yeah, to beat Fenerbahce, that yeah. was mad. Incredible. So it's a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde with Fenerbahce this season, but overall 30 of their 43 competitive games have gone over two and a half, which is, you know, what is that? That's that's almost 70%. Um, I just don't understand this game at all. When you look at the offensive weapons on show, you've got Edin Zeko, Michi Batshuay, Dusan Tadic, Seni's Under for uh, Fenerbahce, and then you've got no mugs in Union, Saljot Shanjilwa in the offensive department with the likes of Amora, 20 goals in all comps this season, Nielsen, 
11 in all comps and, and Eckert, Ienza, nine in all competitions. So I think, you know, the theme for my bets and, and lots of our bets in, in, in this show, in this round are going to be overs and, and I'm continuing here. Two attack-minded teams and the line's two and a half. So I can't really resist. Minus 114 at the moment. If you are playing that line over two and a half in Union saint Joas against Fenerbahce first leg Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern. One, a little bit of uh, outright play, an outright play here from Steve. Not a match play as such, but obviously it does uh, feature the games on Thursday. Steve, this is uh, Olympiakos against Maccabi Tel Aviv. you like one of these two to, to qualify, you've got a to qualify bet. Olympiakos to qualify, Dan, at minus 112. Uh, Bet Rivers have priced up uh, both of them the, the exact same odds, but for me this is not a pick'em. Olympiakos are the better side overall, anyway, in my opinion. And there's two other factors I want to uh, talk about. I mean, firstly, I really want to be opposing the Israeli teams. Um, Maccabi Haifa as well. I think Fiorentina will, will easily get past them. It's a difficult situation. We know what's going on in that part of the world for these teams. Um, I just don't think they're going to be playing their best football. Um, you know. In, in these European competitions. And the second leg is not going to be in Israel. It's going to be in Serbia at um, a place where Olympiakos have already been this season. Uh, you're going to need to help me here, Dan. Baka Topa, Topla. How that's do you one, yeah. pronounce? Mm. You know the one. Um, yeah, another one. It's That's not too far for, for Olympiakos to travel to. So when you've not got home advantage in the second leg, I mean, I'm looking for an edge here on the betting front. And uh, how is this a pick'em? Yeah. Olympiakos should be the clear favourites over the two legs for me to qualify. Yeah. And so minus 112, I'm going to snap this one up. Um, you know, the first leg, Olympiakos are minus 125. They may well win the first leg, but, you know, over the over the course of two, I, no, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind I'm getting an advantage here. Uh, yeah, TSC, I think the downers aren't they, on, a, on a lot of websites if you're looking at that for that Serbian uh, side where they will be playing, of course, not the team that will be in action. Olympiakos uh, to get beyond Maccabi Tel Aviv at minus 112 as an outright play. Best bets before we wrap up. Uh, will, what's your best play over the course of the Europa League and Conference League Thursday fixtures? It's got to be Marseille Villarreal over two and a half. It's outrageous. RJ? I'm sticking with the same match, Marseille Villarreal over 4.5 cards at minus 112, and I love that over. Steve, yeah, it's, for me, I'm going the same match over three Asian goals. So let's hope we can really cash. Uh, there's so many good picks on this show. For, I mean, I, I'm so excited about this round, Dan. Dan, can you please tell the listeners that you hate this over, just so we mm. haven't all jinxed it? Because <laughs> if you, if it's a full house. We all know what happens, and then the comments mm-hmm. are going to be fire. I, I, yeah. I, 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 I don't really know. I mean, I t- I'll tell you what. The only thing I can I can offer for for that game is that I um I commentated on a French game on uh, on Sunday for TNT in the UK, and the producer who was doing the game he said, "I hope this game is is better than the one that I had last night." So, which game did you have last night? And he said the Marseille game. I said, well, hang on a minute. That was a five-one Marseille. When he says it's the worst game of football he's seen all season, he can't believe mm-hmm. there were so many goals. So if that's that's his in that's that's his um, assessment of, of mm. Marseille. So I don't know. I didn't see the game. Were they that bad, Steve? Should they have won five one? He said well, the first half was, were bad. He said yeah, the first Clermont half of football. He says the first half was the worst he's seen all season. Um, <laughs> yeah, but that's the problem go. when you're facing yeah. a side of league de quality. Mm. Yeah, it's mm. sort of, um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna jinx it. I'm not gonna buck it for for anyone, even though that is my role in life. I heard. I did hear a rumor. I did heard a rumor that you might have a vested interest in the Molder game. I have well, I'm commenting on the Mulder game at the weekend, uh, the weekend on Thursday. That'll nice. be on Thursday, yeah. So that'll be uh, that'll be an interesting <laughs> one. I've been pegged as the uh, as the Nordic man for the for the world feed for Europa League and the Conference League, but I'm looking forward to it. It should be good. I mean, really enjoy the Bird of Glimpse game. They should have gone through, as you know, against Dijk. I'm massively. Mm. I'm going to get with Villa somehow. That might be my best play. But look, the um, I'm interested to see how how Marcelino is. On the, in the dugout, if he was threatened by supporters from Marseille, obviously we shouldn't really laugh at that. But uh, and, and to RJ's point, 
white hot atmosphere, be a massive crowd, you would have thought. So let's hope for corners and goals. I'm not going to jinx it for anyone. Mm -hmm. Um, Many thanks. Uh, That wraps it up for our Europa League and Conference League edition. And uh, we're going to be back, of course, with the second legs, which come around uh, next week. You can stay up to date with all of the content from the Betting Weekly team on our YouTube channel. Uh, From all of us for now, though, it is goodbye.